welcome to Sculpture Studios. Much like the cracked earth on the African landscape, an elephant's skin is dusty and highly detailed. A few years back, Aidan created a full-sized elephant, carved from polystyrene, and detailed in clay on the surface. Assuming this was going to be a popular request for future projects, he kept hold of this mould, and for very good reason. Since the creation of the original model, Sculptor Studios has laid up six elephants to be flown out to Tokyo, proof that elephants can fly, a pink elephant for a gay pride parade, and two elephants for a zoo. For these particular two, a collection box was installed in the side of the legs so that people could donate to the zoo and the upkeep of the elephant enclosure. We heard that not only did this raise lots of money for the zoo, it also ended up paying for the sculptures themselves, so the clients were very happy and they came back to us later on with more projects. Here we're going to be laying up one complete cast from the moulds, with the finished elephant being flown out to Europe. A resident in Greece found us on the web after seeing some of our previous elephants online and he said he wanted us to make him one. We asked what this was going to be used for and he said it's just to put in his back garden as a nice talking point for guests and purely for his own enjoyment as he wanted to treat himself. After we've checked that we've got all the mould pieces and they're all ready to go, we put the appropriate sections together and bolt them all along the adjoining walls. We do this so we can lay up multiple mould pieces in one go and it saves us time and this leaves us with less joining up later on and fewer seam lines to need to clean up. We add a spirit wax and a PVA blue as a release agent and add a gel coat inside. As the sculpt is going to be situated out in the open and exposed to the weather and the elements, we're making this nice and strong and going on with a 4 ounce build up of glass fibre. If this were one of the sculptures being used in a public zoo or out in a theme park where it's likely to get kicked and touched, possibly climbed on, we'd often go up to a really sturdy build up of 6 ounces, but for a peaceful location like the client's back garden, 4 ounces is more than suitable. The client also mentioned that he wanted to be able to move the sculpture with relative ease, so this lighter build-up of glass fibre helps reduce the weight for manoeuvrability. We're using a general purpose resin for this job, as opposed to a fire rated class O, as there's far less chance of the sculpture being in any way a fire hazard when it's situated outside. It's quite a puzzle to begin with, trying to figure out what mould pieces go where, especially with a sculpture that has over 20 different mould sections, but we label each of these carefully so we know which sections go together. Here we're laying up the tusks as individual units, so they can be added to the head later on. We often have requests for various sizes and different lengths of tusk, so we tailor these to each client. Now that all the casts are taken, it's much easier to identify the different sections ready to be joined up. Using the opening for the head, we get inside the whole body and attach the legs internally. We then cut a trapdoor out of the belly of the elephant to gain access to the inside while the head's being attached. We do the same here for the tail. We make all the joins for areas like the tail and the tusks particularly strong, as these are often points where the elephant is held onto to manoeuvre it around. We go over the whole thing with the self-etching primer, and this allows the paints to bond to the resin and provides a nice solid base layer. Where we added clay to the mould to minimalise the seam lines, these flat areas then need to be detailed and re-etched in, so we're adding all the necessary wrinkles using a Dremel tool. For permanent installations, like our giraffe sculptures, we'd usually add metalwork inside the legs so the sculpture can be staked down into the ground. This is ideal for wind loading purposes and saves the sculpture from being moved or knocked around by the public or potentially stolen if you're feeling that ambitious. For this job though, we're going to be adding casters onto the feet so it could be moved around nice and easy. We're adding wooden bases to each foot and laminating them in to ensure all the wheels are level and they can all rotate. A black layer of paint is added so that all the deeper detail is darkened and emphasised. Aidan then uses a theatrical dry brush technique to go over the top and highlight the high spots. This really gives the texture a more dramatic dimension and a more realistic feel. Considering the first elephant was made 10 or 15 years ago, you can see how well our mould has lasted by how well the cast came out. When we create a production mould, we intend for it to last so that projects just like these can be an easy yes decision and will take on the work. We still have the mould for this, so if you're ever looking to have a full size elephant made, you know where to come. Here we are, we have the elephant on wheels. They're sticking out about 25 millimetres, so they just float. And we can move it around. So the whole thing's nice and free. And uh, we've put 
stainless steel wheels on with um, an acrylic base or nylon base so they won't flatten and, uh, and so even if it's left outside for a couple of years they shouldn't rust at all either. But yeah, I'm going to add some now colours to this. This is just a kind of black, white and grey. Now I'm going to dust some browns and greens into it just to give it a bit more skin texture. Aidan's creating a base layer of colour for the nails using an airbrush, and with the colour references the client centres of how he wants it to look, Aidan's then going to go over with dust and sandy colours as though the elephant's been out in the wild. He can see the pink elephant that we made for the Gay Pride Parade a few years back, and notice how it's retained the same level of detail in pink as it has in the grey. So here's us with the finished elephant, having a bit of fun before it gets shipped out to Greece. We really hope the client enjoys this piece of sculpture and that it feels nice and at home in his back garden. We look forward to making more elephants in the future as we've worked out the best method of doing so and we're going to keep hold of this mould as we know it's a popular one. Please feel free to leave any comments below as they're always appreciated and hit the subscribe button for our latest videos. You can like Sculpture Studios on Facebook and for more of our work visit sculpturestudios.co.uk. Thank you very much for watching.